The Sri Lankan government has been accused of war crimes in the UN. Hopefully, protests will be heard and the appropriate actions are made. Matt, what are you doing? Can't you see I'm trying to dust for fingerprints? You know, like CSI? Haven't you seen the show? Okay, Matt, forensics is not like on TV. But, oh man, you have to stick around to learn more about real forensic investigations. But before that, we'll take a look at Natasha Kamkin's story about a real-life mind reader. He goes by the name of Mysterion the Mind Reader. He went from being a chef to a magician. Why don't we check him out right now? Let's do it. For over a decade, Toronto magician Mysterio the Mind Reader has been scaring audiences. A talented stage performer, his act incorporates live entertainment with telepathy, stage hypnosis, and telekinesis. He's established a name for himself, making appearances on television and performing at large-scale venues such as clubhouse. With a PhD in ESP, Mysterio has wowed audiences and stunned critics with his ability to accurately see into the hearts and minds of others. Every magician, in a sense, they're all well -known. We all have our own abilities in the sense of being able to present an effect. I have my own look and my own presentation style. I'm a bit of a villain. That's very rare in magic that people can take the stance of a bad guy. I, uh, of course, have my hairstyle that people can easily recognize me. I'm very recognizable, and that's what sets me apart. I am Mysterion in the sense that I enjoy the things that the Mysterion character enjoys, and so when the Mysterion character presents them, it's believable. And that's something that's very rare, I find, with entertainers. They're hard to find themselves in their character, and so the character looks very flat, two-dimensional. And that's why you get a lot of magicians who just are doing a trick, but they're not presenting a show. One of the things that I'm most uh, interested in, of course, is mind reading and mentalism. So anywhere where, or any time where there's something that is so impossible that I'm going to look into your eyes and tell you a word that you're thinking of or something like that, those are the types of effects that I like. Are you sure? There's one effect that I do that where somebody chooses a page in a book, the book is closed, they then call out a word that they saw on that page, and the page then somehow vanishes from the book itself. It's torn out and it appears on the other side of the stage, sandwiched between two tied chalkboards. And uh, of course, the word that they were thinking of has marked itself on one of the boards. Grab my wrists. On the count of three, I want you to drop the lights down and turn them immediately back up. One, two, three, up! Needless to say, prior to this, we've shown the, board, the boards blank and set them aside. That so that's correct? one of my favorite effects, what just because it's so impossible wrong? and it's still so personal. You can open the book to any page, look at a word that you want, the page is gone, the word okay. is revealed, page and I'm nowhere page. near the <laughs> chalkboards. 191. And what was the word? Wallpaper. Wallpaper. Turn to page 191. <laughs> it goes 90, 91, 92. It's coming. I always have to be fresh and current. I gotta change the show constantly to be able to sell tickets so people aren't buying tickets for the same show all the time. I gotta stay fresh, I gotta stay looking good, I gotta do all these different things. So that in itself is a challenge. Of course, um, dare I say monotony. I mean, these things can continue over and over and over and over and over again. People are gonna get bored with what they do. I don't get bored with what I do, but I always have to raise the bar to challenge myself, to change it up, to be different. I present this as just fun. I present this as something that you come out and check it out, and it's neat, and it's, and then you go home and you leave it at that. You don't go home thinking, oh my God, humankind is evolving into the super race, no. I'm doing it for fun and I'm doing it for entertainment. But the idea, just the idea that it is so powerful and the idea that it leaves people with such an impression that, you know, this is a possibility to be real. I like that idea. I like that curtain that's still there that people aren't allowed to peek behind. And when you have too many answers and too many explanations to how something's done, I'm very secretive and very guarding of these secrets because it took me years and years of training to learn. I'm not gonna just give that away after all 